Hello everyone, once again today we're pondering portable power packs as possible alternatives to a DIY electrical system. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Van of Action. We're converting a 2018 Dodge Promaster van into a family camper and we're sharing the journey along the way. And we're getting asked some questions. And in this video, we're doing a comparison between a Blue Eddy portable power pack and a do-it-yourself complete wiring system in a van. Is it possible to buy something right out of the box that's better than or as good as doing it yourself piece by piece? Along the way, if you find this useful, give us a like, a share, and a subscribe and by all means leave us a comment and it's the comments that really make my day you know I'm up here in the mountains all by myself working away and when I when I get feedback from people from all over the world it's really uplifting to me and I get a, I, I get that makes it a lot of fun sometimes people criticize sometimes they add on to an idea which I think is spectacular sometimes they ask a question sometimes my replies are short sometimes they're too long to type and when they're too long to type they become another video and that's exactly what's happening today one of the most intimidating parts of a van build for most people is the electrical system. I know that it was for me. You know, a lot of people feel that uh, it's really hard to do and they got to do it right because they felt if they if they do something, something wrong, they're either going to blow the van up or burn the van down or something. I know that's how I felt. But what I found was that by looking at each system in its uh, individually, one little chunk at a time, it became understandable and it actually became easy to do. I posted a video, a number of videos about the wiring and, and uh, someone in the community watched them at uh, in November uh, 2021 and asked a question about portable power packs. And honestly, I didn't even know that they existed at the time. So I, I went and I did some research. They suggested the name Blue Eddy. So I, I, I did some research and I posted a video comparing the Blue Eddy portable power pack to a DIY electrical system like I put in the van and like I had done a video about. That video comparison is up here somewhere. There's a link to it, but there will be a link at the end of this video. So uh, I don't click away now, you can click away at the end. But uh, some of the things I'm gonna talk about in this video We'll, we'll go back and speak to the one that I did before. And I'm not going to go over everything that I did before. Uh, so you should watch them both together anyway, okay? Not trying to be mean. I just don't want this to be like a 45-minute video. Now, before I start that, I just want to say this site does not have any affiliate sales links. There's nothing, no link to Amazon here. This site is not a place where people send their shit and have me unwrap it and tell you how wonderful it is and try and talk you into buying it. That's not what I do. And if you look over my shoulder, you won't see any beautiful girls in bikinis. So that's just so far I'm batting a thousand on that. So what I'm offering is my opinion. I'm just a guy. I'm not a doctor, not an engineer. I'm just offering my opinion. I do some research. I form an opinion and I express it. That's all I'm doing. Take it as a grain of salt. My opinion and a dollar twenty-five will get you a cup of coffee at McDonald's. I'm not endorsing McDonald's either. Okay. So let's get started. Someone in our community, Deborah Crawford, sent us this email. She said, "I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Why did you look at such an old Blue Eddy product? I watched your video and I think you would change your mind from the older product to the new 200 Max or 300." which they released, and it A, fixes the inverter size problem, B, it has the ability to add extra batteries, and C, has all the plugs on the one side. Deborah, thanks so much for asking that. Before I start answering that, though, let me back up a little bit and I'll tell you how I made the first video where I got the information. I received the request for my thoughts somewhere around the middle of November 2021. Today is the first, the end of the first week of February 2022, so about three months ago. I'm in Canada, so I went onto the Blue Eddy website and I navigated to the, the Canadian page, and this is what it looked like. And today, in February 2022, it looks exactly the same. It looks exactly the same. And because the, the portable power pack, from my perspective at the time, was a way to store energy first, I thought I'd like to try and compare apples to apples. So I looked for a system that was closest in size to the system that I had built into my van. I thought that would be the fairest way to make a comparison. Now, Blue Eddy measures, or, or yeah, they, they, they measure their storage capability by watt hours. I had built my van in amp hours, and an amp hour times your voltage equals a watt hour. So I have 200 amp hours in storage in my van. I have a 12 volt system. So 200 times 12 equals 2400 
2,400 watt hours. And so I just looked on the Blue Eddy page and I found one that had 2,400 watt hours as storage. And I thought, well, there, that one's the same storage capacity as mine. It seems like a good place to start. That's the one I picked. I don't think it's an old product though. It's like it's, it's, it's currently available. That's what they're selling as a two as a two hundred as a two hundred and two thousand four hundred watt hour storage. That's the one you're going to buy. And anyway, that's how I picked it. I didn't look any further into any of the other uh, other systems. So this is a great opportunity for me to see just what the other ones look like. You'll also see Deborah on the Canadian page. The AC two hundred P is available, but there is no three hundred. There's no three hundred available at all to me in Canada. And I don't know why that is, it's just the way it is. So this comparison is going to be based on the, the Blue Eddy AC200P system. This is it right here. And it's a, it's a great looking system. I also want to say before I get into this is that I'm, I'm measuring the Blue Eddy's capabilities as compared to or against the requirements that I feel personally I need to be satisfied in my van. The Blue Eddy product looks like an absolutely spectacular product. It's just the question is, does it work for what I want it to do? Is it right for me for my van? That's that's the only basis of this comparison. This is it right here, Deborah. And it's you're right, all the plugs are in the front, absolutely. And it's got a ton of them too. It comes with six three-prong 20 amp plugs. And if you're in a regular household circuit in North America, a plug in your wall that has uh, like a, a little wall outlet that has two plugs in it, they'll be on a 15 amp circuit. And typically you might have even two or three of them on the same circuit because nothing's ever running full time all the time. But to have six plugs, each one with 20 amps is just massive capacity, absolutely massive capacity. It also has these two little things that are 5.5 millimeter plugs. Honestly, I don't know what you would use those for. If someone has in, in, who's watching this has, has an idea, please leave a comment for me. I, I read them all, but I don't know what, I have no idea what the 5.5 mill, millimeter uh, plugs are for. It also has one 25 amp fuse block uh, lead. So I'm, I'm not sure how to say this. It has the, the capacity, if you buy a special plug, you can take 25 amps off in one shot and run it to a fuse block, a traditional fuse block you'd put in a, in a, in a, a van conversion. 25 amps, uh, the typical ceiling light circuit would be a 5 amp breaker. You'd have lots of capacity with, for most things with a 25 amp uh, a breaker there. So you could, you could end up building your van out exactly as you would for van life and have the ceiling lights down the ceiling and the lights over the kitchen counter, some reading lights by the bed. You'd have a light in the basement, have little switches for all of them. You could just, just get in and throw the switch, the light comes on. Just like at home, very comfortable. This unit will give you the capacity to do that. The first one we reviewed didn't. That's a, that's a, a, a that, that can be a very good thing. It also has five USB ports. Some of the, some of them are the faster ones and some of them are the slower ones. Now, and to be perfectly honest, we've been using our van for all, well, for the summer now. And, uh, all we've ever plugged into a USB part, port has been our phones. I don't know if there's other other things to plug into USB ports that you, we would need power for, but if, again, if someone knows of something, leave a comment. I'd love to be aware of that. We've only ever needed our phones. We've got them scattered all over the place, but we've only ever needed our phones. It also has a cigarette lighter, and uh, a lot of the appliances that you use for 12 volt will need a bigger plug. That's the one for that. That's great. That's absolutely great. Lots of ways to get power out of this puppy. It's just amazing how much power you can get out of it. Now let's take a look at how we put power in. And with this particular system, with you, there's they, they say there's five ways you can generate electricity to, for storage. The first is AC or shore power. We've talked about that, remember? So in this case, the AC is 400 watts, which is a quite a push. It's a pretty big push. And you can actually bump that up. We'll talk about that in a minute. The second way that you can generate electricity, like on the first time around, with, was with solar. Right? The first Blue Eddy I looked at had solar. This one has solar, but this one has 700 watts of solar ca capacity, where the, the first one only had five. 700 watts is a lot of solar panels. That's the second way to generate electricity. The third way, and this is the first system I looked at, did not have this. This system has a DC to DC charger, which means you can take energy from the battery of your van and use it to charge your batteries. And I think that's a spectacular thing to be able to do. That's a great, it's great all the time you're driving, you can use your van, the surplus energy your van generates to charge the battery in the back. The house, and the, and that's, that's great. That's a great thing to be able to do. The other two 
uh, ways to charge they talk about is one is with a generator. I mean, sure, that's great. And the other one is if you have another battery. I don't know why you'd want to, if you had another battery, anyway, it doesn't matter. But you can, those are the five ways. But the three ones that, we're, that are, we should focus on are the, the uh, AC, the DC to DC, and the solar. So now let's unpack those just a little bit and see how they work, all right? The AC, the shore power is 400 watts unless you buy a second cable. And you can do that, another 400 watt cable, and you can plug it in and it'll go into the jack that the solar panels go into. And this is new too, because if you recall from the first video, the shore power and the solar panel power both plugged into the same port in the, in the, uh, the 2400 model. But in this model, they have separate ports, so you can you can double up on the on the AC charging, and when you do that, uh, the second one plugs into the solar panel port. That's great. You can charge them both together. And in fact, if you have solar panels going and you have uh, and you have the AC plugged in, you can charge them simultaneously when you're standing still like that. Which is unless you have a long extension cord, which again the first one didn't do. So that that's a big bonus. You can push in more electricity, and that's that's great. You can do that. The solar panels are 700 watts. That's an awful lot of uh, power to have, uh, solar panel wise. In fact, I'm not saying it can't, but uh, I know on our 3500 Dodge ProMaster extended body, which is the biggest body frame or body shape that the Dodge ProMaster comes in, with two ceiling fans, and I wouldn't want to give up a ceiling fan, I'd have a hard time getting 700 watts on the roof. I'd have a real hard time doing that. In fact, I don't think I, don't think I could. Um, 700 watts is a lot of solar panels to have on a van, but you can. The point is it has that capacity and that's great. The DC to DC charging, uh, it runs just the way it's supposed to run. It's fine. It, uh, it's easy to do as long as you're running, you plug it in, it's going to work. It's great. It's great. In conclusion, there are a number of ways to shove a whole lot of energy under the right circumstances into this battery. And that's a really good thing because this is where engineers lose me. I'm a, I'm a carpenter. I don't understand an awful lot about an awful lot, and I understand, and I get that. I know my limitations, but this makes no sense to me at all. If you watch the first video, you'll see that 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 uh, unit that was there that was a, a 200 amp hour storage system, and it had uh, a couple of plugs and a couple of USB ports. This baby has six three prong plugs, five. USB ports, two 5.5 milliliter millimeter uh, plugs of some sort. It has the 25 amp fuse block you can take off of it. And I didn't mention on the top of it, there are two charging things that you put your telephone on as wireless charging. There's two of those, right? They've got all kinds of ways to take power out of this battery. And they have a, they bumped up the inverter size from the first one. This one has a 2000 watt inverter. So absolutely, it's bigger. All kinds of ways to take the power out but they made the battery smaller. This battery compared to the first one is only about 20, about 75% as big. I don't get it. They've got all kinds of ways to, to take power out and they were putting less power in. Doesn't make sense to me. This is a 2000 watt hour battery, which converts to about 166 amp hour batteries, uh, amp hours of battery storage. And from the literature that I've read, because of the way these systems work, you don't get it all out. It's uh, there's, there's some residual stuff that stays in there for circuitry and safety reasons and all the rest of it. So you lose about five or 10%. So that 166 hours is probably gonna be about 150 amp hours when it's all done. So we've, we're cutting our storage by 25%, but we're increasing all kinds of ways to get energy out of it. And we're increasing all kinds of ways to put energy into it under the right conditions. You see, and that's one of the things that, uh, that, that concerns me. The, uh, from the way I use my van, I'm sure it's a great system, but you can you'd use the shore power and the solar power together, which is great. You can be sitting still, have your, your solar panels going, you can have them all over the yard if you want, and you can have be plugged into the house, which is great in charging your batteries. As soon as you hit the road though, you can have DC to DC charging or solar charging because they both plug into the same port. You can't do those simultaneously, which to me is a bad design because when you're driving down the road, if it's sunny, why not harness the power of the sun? And they're on your roof all the Well, if you did it that way, they'd be on your roof all the time anyway. And then you're driving, you might as well use the extra energy your engine's generating. But you can't do that with this system. So when you're, when you're on the road moving, you can only use solar or DC to DC, not both.
I find that to be a shortcoming. But then it rolls back around to the question of how are you going to use it? How does this function for you? And in terms of all the plugs, like six plugs, five USB ports, and a fuse block with 25 amps in it, for my van life, I don't need access to that much power at the same time. But having 150 uh, amp hours of energy in storage, that's very attractive to me. Even in fact, the um, uh, these are lithium batteries, so you're going to get about 3,000 cycles on it uh, to 80%. And what that means is you can charge this battery, you can let this battery drain completely, recharge it 3,000 times, and 3,000 times later you'll be down, you'll lose about 20% of the battery capability. So after 3,000 times, you've only got 80% of the battery left. I mean, this battery will last decades. There's no, there's no issues about that. And 150 amp hours of energy could very well be enough to make everybody happy. Run your fridge. You may have an issue running a hot water tank or a hot plate, but you should be able to run most things you want to run in a van. It could be absolutely great for that. So the question becomes, I guess, are you paying for things you don't need? I don't mean, again, that's a subjective thing you'd have to answer for yourself. In terms of actual physical use, there's a couple of things for me that would make me say this doesn't work for me very well. The first is the uh, the cigarette lighter thing. It's on the side of the box, and I guess it, I guess it becomes the first question is where are you going to put it? And to me, the logical place for this would be in the basement of the van. Uh, one reason is it's kind of bulky, and you wouldn't want to put it in a cupboard. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. Having it out to me doesn't make a lot of sense. That LD the LD. LCD display and the power button glow 24 hours a day. So, I mean, it's like a night light. I would have it in the basement. And if it's in the basement, the cigarette lighter port is hard, isn't accessible. And we found that there are a number of 12 volt appliances that need a cigarette lighter port to function with. So we've got one mounted above our kitchen cupboard. But you can buy little things like little water uh, water kettles that run on 12 volts, or we bought a little oven that you can just put a couple of cinnamon buns in and drive down the road, and an hour later when it's time for a break, you got a nice, nice warm snack to eat kind of thing. And they plug into that cigarette lighter. And I wouldn't like the idea of getting around and having to go into the basement every time to plug it in. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The biggest issue I have with it, though, is its ability to charge simultaneously. So when you're going down the road, you either need a real long extension cord or you're only going to be using your solar panels or your DC to DC charger. You can't do both. And to me, that's a bit of a shortcoming. At the end of the day, the Blue Eddy portable power packs appear to be just a wonderful product. But they don't, wouldn't work for me at all. I wouldn't buy one. I wouldn't buy one. And I wouldn't recommend to anyone who, was, who, to, who wanted to use uh, a van for van life and van travel. I think, in my opinion you'd find a better product, you'd find a better use of it, of your money being spent on three or four solar panels for the roof, uh, a couple of charge controllers or, or a combination charge controller and a couple of lithium batteries. And then you're gonna do all your wiring anyway, which you would same with this for the lights and the fans and all the rest of it to the fuse block. All this really does for you is, uh, what does it do for you other than it, it'll charge up your fuse block when, and then it gives you a little extra energy for the uh, the inverter, right? For the, the three prong plugs if you wanna use them. I think you, uh, I think there's, as a van life for me, it's not functional. So once again, I'm not getting any, any merch from Blue Eddy and I can live with that. I hope you found this useful. If you uh, please give us a like, a share and a subscribe, leave us a comment, leave us a criticism. Love to hear from you. All the best.